one never knows what each day is going to bring. The most important thing is to be open and ready for it. Henry Moore was born in Castleford, the son of a coal miner. Henry Moore decided to become a sculptor when he was 11 after hearing of Michelangelo's achievements at a Sunday school reading. Henry Moore wasn't just influenced by the artistic movements of the post-war era, he actually witnessed the violence firsthand. Moore volunteered to fight in World War I for the British Army when he turned 18. He was injured in a poisonous gas attack at the Battle of Cambrai. During World War II, Henry Moore was recruited as an official war artist, and he created many drawings of the people taking shelter in London during the Nazi air raids. One never knows what each day is going to bring. The most important thing is to be open and ready for it. When World War I ended, Moore received an ex-serviceman's grant to continue his education, and in 1919, he became a student at Leeds School of Art. After graduating from Leeds School of Art, Moore attended the Royal College of Art in London, where he received a scholarship enabling him to travel to France and Italy. His independent study in France, Italy, and later travels is where most of his creative ideas came from, but it was not his only inspiration. Moore studied Roger Fry's Vision and Design, which was a book about the science and math and art, which inspired Moore with his creative sculptures. Henry Moore independently studied biology, geology, bones, botany, and other organic forms, ever implementing these studies into his sculptures. I think in terms of the day's resolutions, not the years. Henry Moore had great admiration in Romanesque and early Gothic sculpture. He saw primitive sculptures from Africa and Oceania at the British Museum, including Egyptian, Sumerian, Archaic, Greek, Eurasian, and Central American sculptures. Moore primarily worked in organic forms heavily inspired by objects in nature. His influences from other artists such as William Blake and Joseph Mallard William Turner can be seen in some of his work today. To know one thing, you must know the opposite. More sculptures were either very small or very large. Rarely did he ever make medium-sized pieces. During the Great Depression, shipping large sculptures became too expensive and Moore switched to making smaller sculptures to fit the demand of his work while also trying not to lose too much money in the process. Moore was focused on the materials he used and how to bring out the essence of the material through his sculpture. Henry Moore's primary materials for making his sculptures included stone, alabaster, bronze, bird's eye marble, wood, walnut wood, metals, and lead. He also had a list of materials for doing prep work. Charcoal, India ink, string, wire, terracotta, water crayon, wax, pencil, and watercolor were his primary prep materials. Three-dimensional materials demanded a three-dimensional approach, and the surreal objects needed to interact with a real atmosphere. Moore's work often applies relief to work in the round rather than on a flat surface. Moore studied color from other artists, such as in Blake's drawings and Turner's paintings, by incorporating them into his own designs for preliminary sketches. Moore helped Surrealism take a step out of the traditional frame and began to work in a more dimensional manner. It's a mistake for a sculptor or a painter to speak or write very often about his job. It releases tension needed for his work. The Henry Moore Foundation is a keeper of nearly 14,000 works made by Moore, including sculptures, drawings, and paintings creating one of the largest library archive sources for sculpture education and sculpture history. Not many foundations can accomplish all three of these tasks. That's what makes this foundation so unique. The Moore Foundation has donated millions of pounds to artists around the world to kickstart their career. Henry Moore was a giving person when it came to financial support and supporting emerging artists, which is what the foundation continues to accomplish to live out his legacy. Moore helped broaden the use of alternative material in sculpture, and brought recognition especially to the use of wood as a medium for the use in fine art sculpture. This move from the traditional use of only stone for fine art sculpture helped open up a world of aesthetic and conceptual possibilities for sculptors.
Henry Moore once said, art is an expression of imagination, not a representation of reality. <laughs>